Am I the asshole for being livid at my, now, husband? My, female, 33, husband, male, 30, and I got married last week. I had been super chill throughout the whole wedding planning, and during the actual event. Because I know shit happens and if anything goes wrong, or not exactly how we want it, it's not that big of a deal and may even make the wedding more memorable for the guests. The one thing that I told my husband I didn't want to happen was I didn't want him smashing cake in my face. I had a suspicion that he would find it funny to do it, so during the planning, I flat out told him not to do it. I don't think it's funny, I don't want to mess up my makeup that took hours to apply, and I don't want cake on my expensive wedding dress. I told him I would be livid if he did it. He promised that he wouldn't. Well, come the cake cutting time, what did he do? Smashed the cake in my face. It got on my dress, and messed up my makeup, just like I knew it would. I'm pretty sure his friends convinced him to do it, not that that makes it any better. I kept it together, went and cleaned myself up, and put on a smile for the rest of the reception. But afterwards, I let loose on him. I yelled at him that this was the one thing I asked him not to do, and he promised that he wouldn't. He told me I was being dramatic, that it's not a big deal, and we should just be enjoying our time as newlyweds. So was I being overly dramatic? Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for calling the police in my client? I, female 28, do babysitting on the weekends to make some babysitting on the weekends to Thank make you. extra cash. There is one family I definitely should have phased out by now but the kids are cute and if I don't have another job, it's easy money. My issue is, the mom is never home on time. She used to not give me return times but finally I started asking as it made it impossible to get anything done on the weekends. I'd go babysit so she could go to brunch but she'd be gone from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. My whole day was gone. After that, she'd started giving me time but never stick to them. She wouldn't even call to tell me, she'd just stay out. On Saturday, I got to her house at 6 and she was supposed to be home by 9. I told her she needed to be on time because I had plans to go out with friends. I was even getting ready at their house after I put the kids to be. She promised. Of course, 9 rolls around and she's not home. I call her, no response. Text, no response. Another hour, nothing. Still calling and texting. Finally, it is midnight. By this point, my plans are long ruined but I'm pissed and exhausted. I call her and leave a voicemail saying if she's not home in the next hour, I'm considering the kids abandoned and calling the cops. I also text her this. I try calling her 30 minutes later and it goes to voicemail on the second ring. I text her again and she leaves me on read. If she had reached out saying hey, I'm staying out until X time, I would have stayed. I don't know any of her family nor the father of the kids so I can't call them. I gave her a grace period of 15 minutes and tried calling again, finally called the police, non-emergency line. They showed up and I showed our agreement in text from earlier in the week confirming that she'd be home by 9. They tried contacting her, didn't answer. I was dismissed and they took the children to the police station. I go home and go to bed. I am awoken at 3 a.m. by a frantic call. It's her. Where are the kids? Why am I not here? I tell her I followed through on my threat, check the police station. She cursed me out, I hung up and went to bed. The next day, she sends me an essay saying the kid's father was called and there's a DCF investigation launched against her. She called me every name under the sun but I didn't think I was wrong until I spoke to a friend with kids. She said I should have just waited it out and refused to ever sit for her again. She asked if her potential losing her kids was worth me being petty. Am I the asshole for telling my fiancé she's not the breadwinner if she's not putting the bills in front of our families and friends? My fiancé and I moved in together shortly before we got engaged. Before we did, we discussed how we'd split the housework and bills. 50-50 down the middle with some wiggle room for when the other needs help. When we moved, it was into her parents' two-story garage that they converted into basically an apartment. They offered a low rent, 700 total, and pitched for the electric and internet so we could save money for our own place and wedding. My fiancé earns more than me and that's cool, I'm proud of her. Before we moved in together it always seemed like she was living paycheck to paycheck and I chalked it up to the apartment she had prior having insane high rent. She stuck to the 50-50 arrangement at first concerning bills but she missed often and I had to remind her about it. 
Post engagement, she's back to living paycheck to paycheck, either missing or very late with her part of the rent monthly, the two utilities we pay, groceries, late with her car payment. Her parents have talked to me multiple times about rent and I've covered her missing portion to get us caught up, and then try talking to her. It always turns into her saying we should just move if her parents are going to hound us. I told her we're lucky it's her parents because anywhere else would have kicked our asses out. On top of that, I pay my own bills, do about 65% housework, arrange and pay for most of our dates and vacations, gifts for her, pay most towards our pets. I've suggested a financial coach but what kicks me is whenever we're around others, she boasts about being the breadwinner since she earns more. Goes on about the stresses of being the main source of income, all the hours she has to work to pay all our bills. I was letting it slide until few days ago we were at a get-together. She and her sister started up again about her being the breadwinner. Her sister said something to the effect of her ex-boyfriend had a hard time being with someone who earned more, and my fiancé went good thing up doesn't mind me bringing home the pay. I told her just because she earns more doesn't make her the breadwinner when she blows it all on herself and I'm paying most the bills. She's embarrassed now and keeps saying I made her look bad and got her in trouble with her parents because they want to see what she spends her money on each month, but I don't think I did anything wrong. Am I the asshole? Update, 11 last night I was ready to just postpone the engagement, as of this morning after a lot of talking and things coming to light, we are broken up. Thank you everyone for your responses and input, especially those who encouraged looking deeper. Quick summary, she felt a joint account would impede her financial independence. She insisted we could afford her purchases based off our total incomes. Her parents were under the impression she was also paying off my student loans, my car, my phone, and paying for our vacations. She didn't get evicted from her last apartment but she was late with her rent often enough that they weren't going to renew her lease, so she didn't suggest us moving to a bigger apartment at her building. Biggest nope I'm out the monthly take-home amount she told me was what she earned before wage garnishment kicked in, in addition to mass debt. She's been doing some online stuff to make up for the money she loses due to that. Yes, I got the ring back. Again, thank you everyone but I will not be responding to any more comments. I'm going to go take some time for myself and get shit figured out. If a zombie apocalypse were to happen, what is an issue people don't think about? The smell. Have you ever seen movies where the cops find a corpse and they puke because of the smell, of one dead body? What's the smell going to be like when, one, a huge percent of the population is decomposing and walking around everywhere? Or if you kill them, lying there not getting buried? just lying there getting more stinky. 2. No refrigerators so all existing food everywhere is going to rot. 3. Toilets will eventually stop working so you have that to deal with. That and diseases other than being bit by a zombie and lack of medicine to treat them.